Welcome back. There is Cristiano Ronaldo. Flow, it's another name for the optimal performance state, and is more commonly referred to as being in the zone. Hi, this video will explore the concept of flow and tell you why it's important, it will look at how it helps top athletes push past their limits, and lastly, we'll look at some practical tips to get more flow into your life. Act 1 what is flow? The term flow was popularized by psychologist Mielai Chitsin Malai in his 1990s book by the same name. In the book, the author explains his findings from his research and many interviews he performed with the top athletes, musicians and other notable top performers of the time. Why? The author wanted to get to the bottom of the phenomena of optimal experience and found that across the interviews, Many top performers had the same way of describing their experiences in seemingly unrelated fields. These top performers would, for example, describe a sense of being in complete control over the complex tasks they were engaged with. They recall being so absorbed that they would often lose a sense of time and self-consciousness. In other words, in the moment, they became less aware of the crowd or even their own thoughts outside of what they were doing. A complete shutdown of the ego. They were in a sort of trance-like flow state. Act 2. Flow in sport. Now why is there so much flow in sport? Well, it actually ticks a lot of boxes when it comes to the characteristics of optimal experience. Let's look at a couple of these. Flow states normally take place when there's a clear goal and some sort of immediate feedback involved. By its very nature, sport almost always has a clear goal. You either get more points than the other team, you do this faster or better than other people, or even better than the you of yesterday. That's why it's so easy to get absorbed in sports, as the process inherently involves the chasing of goals. However, there's another important criteria. Flow often happens where there's a balance between the complexity of the task and the skills involved. And this is the key point. Too much skill and the task becomes boring, but if you have too complex and difficult of a task, then you'll feel overwhelmed. So for example, if I were to play a serious game of tennis with Roger Federer, then the chances are very good that he'd end up feeling very bored and that I'd end up feeling hopeless. You need to get the balance right. Ideally, we'd like to feel like we're pushing ourselves just to the edges of our limits. Furthermore, I'd argue that the ability for a top player to dip into the flow state is one of the key factors that sets it apart from a good performer to being a great performer. Given that everyone has already trained their base level of skill as close to perfection as they can, the great players are those who in pivotal times pull off moments of magic. They're able to tap into the optimal performance state to maximize their abilities. Now this is where the mental game also comes in. You shouldn't find it surprising that the weight of expectation is often the biggest stumbling block for athletes to perform at their best. Many players get overwhelmed and choke in pivotal moments. They get absorbed of the things that aren't part of their immediate tasks and can't enter the optimal performance state. That's also why many top athletes have dedicated sports psychologists. They help these athletes build habits, routines and the mental focus to help them stay at their A game at crunch time. But even for seasoned athletes, it may be difficult to stay at the top of your game forever. Act 3. So how do we get more flow? I've split this section into two parts, the passive side and the active side. Now firstly, the passive side. You can get more flow by firstly just being aware of of where you experience flow and structuring your life around that, be it the certain times of a day where you feel especially productive and then planning your most important tasks for those times, or noticing which activities give you more flow and then doing more of those activities. 
This may seem like simple advice, but honestly with everything nowadays fighting for our attention, something as simple as knowing what things you find engaging and give you meaning can be very hard to see. The second part, the active things you can do. Firstly, try to introduce more of these clear goals into your activities. Ideally, these goals should be small and measurable. For example, you'd want to finish a piece of work within the next two hours. Secondly, try to find a way to introduce immediate feedback into your tasks. For a personal example, I'm a musician and before a performance, I make a video recording of myself and then watch it back. This is an especially painful process as I don't really like watching myself. But I've noticed that you learn a lot more by watching yourself through a video, get a lot more feedback than simply just relying on what you pick up in the moment. Thirdly, associative training. So this is the practice of knowing what sort of things trigger you into getting into the flow state or what sort of things you associate with the flow state. So many top performers, they like to play a certain song on repeat before they head into the ring because they find that this song fires them up and gets them into the exact focus state that they need to be. Put away distractions. So this could be as simple as introducing more downtime from your phone. On the flip side, simply doing less of everything but focusing on one specific thing. Lastly, practice performing under stressful conditions. And this is especially important because performing optimally is a skill, a skill that you can learn over time. Just like a bodybuilder needs time and effort before they can see gains, you also need to spend time in the ring to learn how to perform optimally under pressure. And the best advice that I can give for this is try to get used to performing in a stressful environment. You can start with low stakes, then gradually gear it up until you can slip into a performance state in stressful conditions without batting an eye. Now all of this advice isn't revolutionary and it doesn't necessarily have to be. Test out one or two points, see where that leads you and drop it if it doesn't add any value. And as a final note, flow is a way of getting more meaning into your life but it won't necessarily make your life great. But I do think it can help make it just that little bit better. And who knows where that could lead to. Hi guys, if you enjoyed that video, please give a like and subscribe. Also leave a comment, it would really mean the world to me. This has been my first video and hopefully there will be many more to come after this. The goal is to get a thousand subs by the end of the year, so any help that you guys could give would really be appreciated. Have an awesome day. Cheers.